Today in the workshop, it's episode 5 of the series on building a real robot. We'll take a look at the base electronics on DB1. I'll show you the modules I used and how to construct the power distribution module. We're getting it together today, so welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop and we are back with the DB1 robot which is in pieces right now. The top has been taken off and we've got the base unit over here and it's going to be like that for a little while because we are going to be working on the base unit. Now if you have seen this series since the beginning you will know that the base unit which is also referred to as a navigation unit is where we have all the electronics to drive the robot around and to do collision avoidance etc. It can also be used independently. So if you are only building, let's say, a remote control or pre-programmed robot and you don't need all of the intelligence and advanced sensor features that are going to go on the tower, then you could simply build base unit by itself. Now, as you can see, I've got the paper off of the acrylic right now and we've got the beautiful black acrylic with a number of components mounted on it. And I'm going to explain what these components are. Some of them you'll already know, obviously. And there's a couple of custom boards over here. I'll explain what the function of those boards is and how we're going to hook it all together. So let's take a look right now at what all of these boards actually do. Now here's an overview of some of the components we'll be using on the DB1 base. First, we have two Cytron MD10C motor drivers. These accept a direction and pulse width modulation signal, and they are H-bridges that use MOSFETs and provide a high current output for driving the motor. Next, an Arduino Mega 2560, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with. The first custom board we're putting on is the power distribution board. I'll outline that in a moment. The other custom board is our motor controller board. I'll go over the connections on that one in a few moments as well. And also a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Now you might notice that I've got a question mark on this. I'll explain the use of the question mark in a few minutes. Now let's take a look at the connections on the custom boards that we'll be using on the base. The first board we will look at is the power distribution board. It has a power in connection for connections to ground, 5 volts, and 12 volts. The left motor in is the output of the left Cytron controller. The left power is the power supply for that controller. And the right motor in is the output of the right Cytron motor controller. And the right power is the power for that controller. The left motor out pins connect directly to the left motor and the right motor out pins connect directly to the right motor. There are three 5 volt output connections on the bottom. They have a 5 volt and ground each, and they are to power the other boards in the assembly. There's also a USB power out. This is to power the Raspberry Pi. Now let's take a look at the connections on the custom motor controller. First, we have a power input for 5 volts. This 5 volts comes from the power distribution board. We have two connections for the Cytron motor controller. The left out to the left motor controller and the right out to the right motor controller. These have a ground, direction signal, and pulse width modulation signal on them. And we have two encoder inputs as well. A left encoder and a right encoder. These are the outputs from the rotary encoder on the back of the DC gear motors. And there is also an I2C connection. We'll be looking at the functions and the connections of all these boards in more detail in future episodes. Now let's just take a look at the boards on the DB1 robot. Now here are the components laid out on the back of the DB1 robot and these are mounted onto the acrylic using a series of standoffs. Now not all the standoffs are the same size. 
the motor controllers and the Arduino use M3 hardware, whereas the Raspberry Pi and the two custom boards here use M2.5 hardware. I'd like to thank one of my viewers for suggesting that I tap the acrylic as opposed to drilling through and passing screws through the bottom. It made it a lot easier, and so this acrylic has been tapped and the standoffs are just threaded directly into it. The exception are two of the mounting holes on the Arduino Mega. These two holes, you can't get a screw head at the top of it, and this one over here, you have the same problem if you're trying to mount an Uno, by the way. And so what I've done is I've passed a screw through the bottom and mounted the standoff upside down. It's just sitting on them, but since there's four other screws mounting it. It's still very, very solid. Now, these boards over here are obviously the Cytron motor controllers. We've seen these before in action, and obviously this is the Arduino Mega. This is the Raspberry Pi, the one I had the question mark on, and I'll explain why there was a question mark on it in a moment. Now, this board is actually not wired up yet. This is the motor controller board, and it's just basically laid out right now so I can get an idea of how to do the connections on it but uh, this will be the power in connection these will be the connections that go to the two Cytron boards with the PWM and the direction signals and these are the connections that will come from the motors from the rotary encoders on the motors and there's a connector at the side here for I2C which will connect it to the I2C bus on the Arduino over here this board is completely wired however this is the power distribution board it's got some pins at the top where I can plug in the motors directly. It's also got four fuses on it. Now, that's what these black devices are. These two fuses are for the motors themselves. Now, for better or worse, my motor controllers are capable of supplying enough current to actually reach the stall current of the motor, and that's not necessarily a good situation. And so to avoid having some catastrophic uh, incident in which the motors are stalled and I'm taking an incredible amount of current from the batteries, I've got two fuses on the motor lines. I've also got a fuse on the 12 volt and the 5 volt line. I'm going to keep this practice up on the other layers of the robot as well. So what I'll need to do is determine how much current that everything is drawing and then fuse all of these accordingly. But at any rate, these are the connections here that go to the Cytron controllers for the motor out and the 12 volt in, the equivalent for this Cytron controller. These are 5 volt outputs here. One of them will go to this board over here to the motor controller board. Another one will be powering the Arduino. And I'm going to use a shield on top of the Arduino to make all of the connections on it, by the way. Now, this connection over here, this USB connection, is to power the Raspberry Pi, but there's another 5 volt connection out in case I replace the Raspberry Pi with something else. Now, why would I want to do that? What's wrong with the Raspberry Pi? Well, it really depends on if the Pi is capable of what I want it to do. Now, if we are just going to use this base as a standalone unit, one that we can control remotely, let's say through a Bluetooth or web-based interface, one that we could pre program the Raspberry Pi would be perfect for that. It talks on Wi-Fi, it talks on Bluetooth, it uses a micro SD card so we can control it and store a number of pre-programmed sequences on it. For that the Raspberry Pi will be perfect. But in its use as an intelligent robot, which is the final usage of DB1 where it gets the intelligence and its control signals from the uh, tower above, the Raspberry Pi may not be capable of that. And that's because I want to run in that mode something called ROS, the Robot Operating System. And ROS will run on a Raspberry Pi 3B+, but there are other single board computers that can run it better, and I've got a few of these computers on order right now. Some of them are on back order. As I get them, I'm going to review them on the DroneBot Workshop channel, and if I find one that I think is better suited, I'll put it down here, and that's why I've left all this space over here. A lot of those those other computers are Raspberry Pi form factor equivalents, so they'll dismount in the same place as the Pi, and it uses the same GPIO, and I only use a couple of pins on this GPIO. Essentially, I'm going to only be using the SPI pins on the GPIO. 
but I also wanted to leave some space in case the board that I got was larger. Now, had I not done that, I might have been tempted to move this motor controller board over to here because one design flaw that I can see already is because I've mounted my fuses here, once I have the tower on, there are going to be other layers of acrylic right above it. It's going to be a little hard to get at the fuses and they would have been easier to access over here. So I was aware of that, but I decided that it's a design trade-off and hopefully in normal operation I would never blow the fuses at any rate. So uh, very quickly what the boards all do, obviously we know what the Cytron boards do. They basically take PWM and direction signals in and they have an H bridge consisting of these four MOSFETs that power the motors and this board as you saw already distributes the power and also takes the motor power and does the fusing etc. The Arduino is where we're going to be connecting all of our sensors too and these are the sensors for the navigation unit not the big sensors like we're having on top like the lidar and the cameras and all that but these are going to be using like the optical and ultrasonic sensors that perform the collision avoidance now most of these will be connected through i2c but there also will be direct connections and that's why I wanted to use the Mega with all of the extra connections that it has plus the extra memory that it has because some of these like the optical sensors will need to be connected directly because they will be using interrupts and the Mega has many interrupts another reason for using it because if we're about to hit something we want to know about it right away so this will basically be also controlling through I2C the motor controller board and this will be responsible for producing PWM signals and also taking signals back from the motor these connectors over here and again this is not wired up yet this is just being prototyped these connectors will take the inputs from the rotary encoder this is where I will feed out the direction and PWM signals to the Cytron board and over here we've got a connector that is going to connect I2C to the um, to the Arduino now the Raspberry Pi or whatever board that I end up using over here uh, will connect to the Arduino. It'll basically control the Arduino and it's going to use the SPI bus to talk to the two of those and I'll be doing an episode of the DroneBot workshop on using SPI to interface a Raspberry Pi and the Arduino very shortly. The, R the Raspberry Pi also, of course, has a number of connectors on this side. You'll notice I've mounted everything so it faces out this way. Um, it's going to have an Ethernet cable, which will go up to the uh, layers above. It's also got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is great. The USB may or may not come into play, but one thing it could do is you'll notice that there's a USB jack here. You'll also notice that I'm going to be using Nanos on here as opposed to Pro Minis or something smaller, or maybe this an 18 mega 328 chip and the reason is for the USB ports this is a development robot so I want to be able to quickly be able to change software in that and the mini USB which is what they use over here will be very useful I could also connect all those USBs over to the Raspberry Pi and use it as an interface so I've got a lot of versatility over here so at any rate uh, here you go here are all the boards that we've connected to the DB1 robot on the back and next time we get together I'll show you how we wire them up and we'll actually get this thing moving. So now you've seen all the basic components we are going to be using on the base of the robot. Now these are not the only components that are going to be used on the base because we're going to need sensors as well. And we will cover sensors in a little while. Now these I'm talking about are the sensors that are going to be for the navigation unit, not the main sensors like the LiDAR and the cameras and everything, but sensors that basically perform collision avoidance. And we're going to use some very advanced collision avoidance to make sure we can't bump into anything. Now in order to mount those sensors, I've got myself more of this, more of the acrylic. And I'm going to put some acrylic, I'm going to make a strip of it that goes along here at the back and another equivalent strip at the front and I'm going to use that to mount sensors and electronics that go along with the sensors and that's because I have found it much easier to mount onto the acrylic than to mount directly onto the frame of the robot. I don't really want to drill into the actobotics channeling if I can avoid it. So you will be seeing that again in future videos. So there's a lot that we're going to cover. The next time we get together I'm going to go over the power 
power distribution. We've got to get power throughout the base and then up into the tower. I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm going to show you how we hook up a couple of the boards over here as well. And then we're going to move on in future videos to the motor controller. And so we can actually hook the controller up to the motor drivers and get this thing moving. So eventually DB1 will not just be a stationary object. So that's about it for today's video. I'd like to thank you once again for joining me. Make sure you check out the equivalent article on the DroneBot Workshop website. It's the complimentary article to the video and all of the other articles and videos on the DB1 series. If you haven't seen them yet, it'll allow you to catch up and see what we're actually building. While you're on the website, please consider joining the newsletter. If you haven't, I know I haven't released a newsletter for a while. I've been busy building a robot, but I am firmly committed to trying to get a newsletter out at the beginning of next week and I'll have some more robot news as well as a new method I have that people can use to suggest content for my videos. It's a lot easier than reading about it in the YouTube comments or in the emails that I'm getting. And on the subject of YouTube videos, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I would be very, very thrilled if you would become one of my subscribers. So until we meet the next time, please take care of yourselves and DB1 and I both hope to see you again very soon here in the Dronebach Workshop. Goodbye for now.